Here we are with a 2020 CF Moto C Force 500 high output. It's the two up version, as you can see. It's a brand new machine. I think it's about two weeks old. It belongs to my brother-in-law Seb, who's who's uh, graciously provided us with the opportunity to do a good walk around. Um, we've been out together once so far, but the machine was too too damn dirty to to really see it. So this time around, uh, before we get too deep in the mud, I think it's a good opportunity to get a, a good look at this machine and see how it is. Uh, all in all, my overall impression of this is I think it's a it's a beautiful looking machine. There's a, quite the difference between the 500 and the 600. I won't say that one's necessarily better than the other uh, in terms of cosmetics. Like I said, it's it's all a matter of preference. But um, but ultimately, I think I think both are, in my opinion, some of the best looking quads on the market. So we'll take a kind of a quicker look here. This is exactly how it comes. Uh, he hasn't added any accessories. He hasn't spent an extra dime on it. This is how it comes right from the dealer, right from the factory. So it's got 12 inch upgraded rims. Uh, those are 25 inch wheels. So they're 25 by eight by 12 on the front and 25 by 10 by 12 on the rear. Uh, you can see the nice on the floorboard here, you can see the nice raised foot pegs. Uh, so it keeps you solid and planted while you're riding. And then obviously the raised platform for the, the, uh, the rear passenger, which is always welcome. The clutch in this is the CV Tech clutch, similar to the rest of CF Moto's machines. The hand guards are, are an, not an add-on, I almost call it an add-on. Those are stock, like I said, but those are an extra kind of bell and whistle that CF Moto decided to include, as well as the mirrors. Like I said, everything here is, is stock and included right from the, uh, the factory. Over up front, you can see the lighting package, uh, and we'll do a... A quick demo uh, shortly on on the lights. There's a lot going on here. I know that these these particular fog lights uh, are fantastic because he had those running last time we were out. Just those, and we were daytime, but it still gives great visibility to the machine and really catches the eye. I'm not talking just from a looks good perspective, but obviously you want to be seen. You want people if somebody's coming on the other end of the trail and there's a lot of dust, you want to be seen, and those things are bright. So you definitely accomplish that. Uh, you've got in indicator lights, so the signal lights. I'm not sure if those are included in American models. We're in Canada, and uh, I have seen on YouTube in the past that American models are wired for signal lights, but they're not included for some reason. Um, but here they're included. I may be wrong. Please, if I am, correct it in the comments. Um, and then you've got your low and high beams uh, up here on top. Pop on. I gotta tell you, this seat, I don't know how easy it is to see, but the material, it's a textured uh, material. It, it's really, really well built. Uh, it's a very plush seat. It's very comfortable. Uh, I would, this is probably the plushest seat I've sat on in terms of ATVs. So I think they did a great job with that. And believe it or not, the back seat, it may not look like much, uh, but I tested it out. I'll do it right now. I'm a big guy and uh, this thing, this thing handles me quite well. I feel nice and secure. I've got these uh, armrests, or not armrests, these anchors basically that I can hold on to, the handles. And I know uh, Seb was saying he took out his 17 year old daughter on this and, um, and she was on the back seat and he didn't feel her at all as the, uh, as the driver. So, so it's actually quite roomy. I wish that it kind of enclosed you more and wrapped around you. I know these these handles do, but uh, I believe the seat on the 600 kind of more wraps around you. Now we were talking before filming this video and CF Moto does produce a luggage rack that can bolt onto the back rack here. And I think that would kind of give that effect because it wraps around the rear seat. So it would kind of close you in. It's good for if you have a kid that's going to be on the back for you. Obviously an adult is not such a big deal, but it would be nice. Now, getting into the cockpit, there's a lot going on here. Uh, a lot more than I'm used to seeing on a four-wheeler. Uh, looks kind of like a motorcycle, in my opinion. So, we will check it out and see what we've got. Like I said, Seb will give us a, a lighting demo, but 
you can see here on the light switch, uh, the fog lights, are, the positioning is actually lower than the off, okay? So if you flick it down, it engages just those fog lights, uh, or you go off, low beam, high beam, okay? So there's lots of settings there for lighting, because there's lots of lights. This is obviously the start button. Here you have the signal lights. And similar to a motorcycle, you have to manually uh, turn them off once you've turned. Uh, these are your hazard lights. So that engages the four-way flashers. We've got a horn, and then this is the kill switch. Obviously the winch control here, I should, I should add that the winch that's on this machine, like I said, it, it comes with it. So he did not pay extra to get that winch. That's something that CF Moto includes. And then over on the right side, you've got obviously your throttle, the 4x4 selector, uh, for anybody who's ridden Yamaha before, you're probably very familiar with this setup. So two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive, and then that gives you the, uh, the diff lock, which locks the front diff. And then you have, you have one brake lever. Uh, so it's only on the right side and, and nothing on the left. Uh, so this does engage all, all brakes, front and rear, or the, the foot brake engages just the rear. So that's how they, they set up their brakes. Moving to the, uh, the screen cluster, um, pretty standard. They, uh, I think it's, it's, it's packaged together quite nicely, but, uh, but ultimately it's giving you all the information you need. Uh, so you've got your, uh, uh, your four x four status at the top, obviously your fuel gauge, your odometer, your speed clock, um, and your, uh, your coolant temperature. So again, everything you need at a glance, it's well positioned, it's easy to see from the cockpit. I think they did a good job. Um, the, the gear selector actually, I should mention, I've, uh, I've got a Polaris uh, Sportsman and that gear selector is known to be quite clunky. It's a big old lever, it kind of looks like a front end loader and, um, and it, they don't get great reviews on those things. Maybe on the higher end models, they've improved them. This though, um, this feels good. Uh, oh, for some, I have to hold the brake. Um, but uh, I, I like how it's notched out uh, for the gear selector. It feels like when you get into gear, it's hard to explain, but when you put it into gear, it, it feels like it's in gear. It just gives you that kind of feedback that uh, that is pretty reassuring, I should say. So let me turn this off so we don't get the battery killed. We'll hop off. Move into the back. Uh, again, nice light setup, all LED. Um, do not be deceived; these are not uh, reverse lights. They are those are the signal lights that are uh, that are built in. Uh, you've got this kind of bumper, which is bolted directly directly to the frame, uh, so it's a great recovery point if you do get stuck. Uh, if you don't get stuck, then you're not using the machine right, in my opinion. The uh, the two-inch hitch receiver is included you just have to add the ball whatever size you you choose and then this here is the rear storage so there's a little kind of a rubber strap here that opens up the storage there is no rubber gasket in the storage so so don't put anything valuable in here unless you're going to cover it up in a baggie like this to make sure that it's protected um, i think they could have done a little bit better with this uh, i mean they, you know just in terms of waterproofing or making it more water resistant but uh but it is what it is if that's the the biggest complaint about the machine then then we're doing okay here we are at the front of the machine we're going to do a quick demo on the lighting there's a lot going on here so we can see how it all works what he's got turned on right now are these two fog lights like i mentioned they're bright i don't know how it's turning out on the camera but they they're really bright even in the daytime i can imagine what they do for you at night um, he leaves those on, I, I know when we've ridden together, these things have been on all the time. And in the day, like in my rear view mirror, I can easily see where he's at, even through the dust uh, behind me. And that's good for safety. If you're on a dusty trail and there's, you know, kind of oncoming traffic the other way, it's good to have that visibility. In the signal lights at the bottom here, there's a little LED strip. Uh, I mean, they, you can't really see them because of, they're right beside the bright, uh, uh, fog lights, but they're there and surely at night you'll see them. They, uh, it's funny because I was, I was just thinking on, on some of our vehicles that we have, you got to pay a premium to get those LED strips. Like it's not only on the higher end trims and, uh, and here they're included on an ATV. So that's just an extra bonus that they threw in there. It's nice. All right. Can you show us the headlights? So these are the low beams, I presume. 
correct? Yeah. So they look like a projector style. Uh, I don't think those are LED. They don't look LED based on the color of it. I would imagine they're a halogen bulb, but, uh, but in a projector uh, casing. And then the high beams. Yeah, those are bright. So is there any way to turn on the low beams and high beams at the same time? There isn't, eh? Okay. Do you mind throwing the hazard lights on? There you go. And I'll just wrap around so we can see the tail lights. So there are orange LEDs in clear casing in the rear. And the brakes. There we go. Like I said, all LED. So it's a nice looking machine. Uh, the verdict is still out. Uh, sorry, the jury is still out. The verdict's not here yet in terms of how this thing's going to hold up over time. Uh, but we'll be sure to report back on that. Uh, in the meantime, I think, I think it's fair to say that they've done a hell of a job cosmetically with the machine. They've done a hell of a job at providing value by, by throwing in all the bells and whistles and basically no extra cost because this does trend uh, lower in terms of uh, MSRP than some of the competing brands. This machine was not $89.99 sort of thing, $9,000 Canadian. Um, so that kind of compares to some of the lower end, uh, maybe a Kodiak 450 in the Yamaha world. I, I, it compares to some of the lower end machines, but, but you get a lot more quad for it. You get two up, you've got, like I said, you've got uh, a, a very decent set of tires. almost look like a set of mud lights on it. You've got the winch, you've got a ton of different bells and whistles and ready to go, ready to ride. You don't need to add anything to it. And I think that that's... Uh, I think that's a really good value. Perfect. Well, thank you for watching. In the comments, please let us know if you have any questions. If you like the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. There's going to be a lot more CF Moto uh, uh, videos coming. We've got the C Force here that we'll be reviewing down the road and, and riding. We've got my U Force here as well that we're kind of getting deeper into. And then we'll also be doing some videos of my brother's uh, Z-Forces. So certainly there's a lot to learn about this brand. And we'll make sure that, uh, that you get that information here. Thank you so much for watching.